And just because you're offended, it doesn't mean you're right. You know? It's... Uh, offense is about feelings and feelings are personal some people are offended by equality so what you know so you can't second guess people if you try and please everyone you'll please no one Ricky Gervais had enough of Hollywood's political antics standing before some of the industry's biggest names this British American comedian and actor boldly called them out to their faces Ricky has been making the media rounds for years sharing exactly how he feels about Hollywood's woke culture and the influences perpetuating it his disdain is clear, nothing frustrates him more than influencers using their fame to push political agendas under the guise of wokeness. Watch as he hilariously exposes and mocks Hollywood's self-proclaimed activists. Let's check it out! Hi guys, Ricky G here, wellness and beauty influencer. As a celebrity, I know all about stuff, like science and politics. So trust me when I tell you who you should vote for. If you don't vote the right way, that's like a hate crime and it makes me sad and angry and I'll leave the country and you don't want that. In less than 30 seconds, Ricky effortlessly mocks Hollywood's habit of pushing political agendas on their fans, taking on the persona of a self-important celebrity to drive the point home. What seems like harmless fun carries a scathing critique. He calls out these stars for being ignorant and manipulative, unafraid of naming names like Taylor Swift and reminding everyone of his unforgettable Golden Globe speech, where he famously told Hollywood elites they're clueless about real world issues. Year after year, Ricky's message is the same. Stick to entertainment. He brilliantly exposes the contradictions of woke culture with sharp wit and bold humor, proving his comedy cuts deeper than most. You can get sued in this country for saying someone's gay if they're not, you know, you're, which is a homophobic law because you can't be sued the other way around. You can't be sued for saying someone's not gay if they are, which seems unfair. Last show, Super Nature, dropped on Netflix last year. Um, big backlash, wasn't there? Big, oh, big backlash. People going, you can't say that. For all his daring comments and sharp jabs at woke culture, Ricky certainly faces his share of backlash like the outrage that erupted after remarks he made on one of his shows. But this is Ricky we're talking about. He couldn't care less. One controversy sparked when Ricky dead named the well-known transgender figure, Caitlyn Jenner. In the woke community, dead naming refers to the act of using a person's pre-transition name, which is widely considered unacceptable. Watch as Ricky subtly, yet pointedly, conveys his views on this issue. I found out my crime was that I dead named her. Now, I'd never heard that term, you know, before a day after the Golden Globes, and that was saying her old name, and even acknowledging that she used to be a man. But she did. I, I saw him on the Olympic Games. It was, a, it was decathlete. It was in everything. He was all over the place. It, yeah, I'm not a fascist. It's an odd thing to just declare, isn't it, that you're not a fascist? We assume, don't we? You wouldn't go up to someone on the street and do that, would you? And go and say, oh, by the way, I'm not a fascist. You know, it's like they protest too much. Ricky Gervais seemingly perplexed. Jokes about how the woke movement insists on erasing an entire past identity to uphold their beliefs. The idea seems even more absurd in this case, considering Bruce Jenner was known by that name for 50. Eight years before transitioning to Kate years before transitioning to Kate. Despite Kaitlyn's prominence, Bruce's existence isn't completely erased. What's most fascinating about Ricky is his mastery of sarcasm, which he wields to critique woke culture and reveal its contradiction. Here, he calls out the movement's penchant for virtue signaling with his signature wit. Ricky argues that woke advocates often present themselves as defenders of minority causes, yet he sees this as little more than virtue signaling. It's as if they're using minorities as props to elevate their own opinions and appear morally superior. What bothers him even more is that any dissenting voice is swiftly silenced, labelled and attacked by those who claim to be the most tolerant. For Ricky, Few things are as frustrating as this kind of hypocrisy. Well, you say you're woke, but the companies you work for, I mean, unbelievable. Apple, Amazon, Disney. If ISIS started a streaming service, you'd call your agent, wouldn't you? <laughs> so, if you do win an award tonight, don't use it as a, a platform to make a political speech, right? You're in no position to lecture the public about anything. You know nothing about... I once tweeted, uh, I've put on seven pounds and a picture of me with a big belly. <laughs> do your worst. Insult me, right? People said, you shouldn't fat shame. 
What me? I should, yeah, I should me. Right, okay. My yeah. bad. Yeah. It's it's ludicrous what people get yeah. upset about. If you want a glimpse into just how far woke individuals have taken their tendency to be offended, especially over issues that aren't their own, Ricky shares an intriguing story here. Ricky describes the woke crowd as completely ludicrous in how they pick and choose their moments of outrage. He's in disbelief remarking that it's as if they're constantly on the lookout for anything remotely offensive just to make a public fuss over it. And of course, Ricky has plenty more to say on the subject. You will go online and leave a comment. You might as well go and read Toilet Walls to get upset about them. I have never been upset by anyone's Twitter. I'm too happy. For real things in the world. I once tweeted, people are more offended by jokes about war, famine, skin murder, than actual Actually, war. Yeah. They're not doing anything towards those, they, they shouldn't joke about it. What are you doing towards the real thing? Let's consider this. If, as Ricky says, he's unaffected by people's comments on Twitter, does that imply that the constantly offended woke crowd are actually unhappy, seeking reasons to be upset about everything? Among all the subtle jabs and digs Ricky has made about woke culture, this one definitely ranks near the top. Ricky poses a pointed question that challenges woke individuals directly, one that has yet to receive a meaningful response. In essence, he suggests that those who claim to care about societal issues are simply posturing by taking offence, rather than taking real action like donating to war victims, for example, which would surely be more impactful than merely criticising others' words. Continuing his critique of woke culture, Ricky also voices concern about the growing influence of woke publications that attempt to dictate how comedians should perform their craft. Bridge comedians writing for the posh papers, thinking the rules of comedy, they're laying it down, laying down the law, right? And it's all stuff like, um, comedy should punch up, you should never punch down, you should never punch down. Comedians have always enjoyed the freedom to say what they want, but woke culture has ushered in a wave of opinions on what comedians should or shouldn't joke about. It doesn't take a genius to see that Ricky isn't a fan of this policing. Watch as he delivers a sharp, unfiltered blow to those trying to control comedy. Sometimes you've got to punch down, like if you're beating up a disabled toddler. You know what I mean? <laughs> if you punch up, you'll miss the little cunt and he'll win, you know? I like that joke because it highlights the difference between metaphorical punching down in jokes and actual punching down. But people nowadays want you to believe that words are actual violence, right? Now, you laughed at a joke about beating up a disabled toddler. No one got hurt. If I'd have actually dragged out a disabled toddler and started beating him up, you wouldn't laugh, right? Through a clever joke, Ricky takes another jab at woke culture, making it clear that doing something wrong is not the same as merely talking about it. This echoes a point he made earlier, saying, just because you're offended doesn't mean you're right. In his view, woke individuals treat jokes about sensitive topics as if they're actual acts of violence, an idea he firmly rejects. Ricky isn't alone in this stance. Fellow Hollywood star Rob Schneider was also shocked by a recent woke trend in schools, underscoring that others share his belief that this movement has gone too far. Unbelievably, on university campuses now they have free speech zones, which sounds cool and nice, but not that long ago the entire university was a free speech zone. You know me as the creator of The Office? <laughs> no, you don't, do you? You think Steve Carell did it all? Oh, he's brilliant, isn't he, Steve Carell? He's amazing as the bumbling office manager. Where does he get his ideas from? <laughs> Let's pray. This troubling trend follows woke individuals clamping down on others' right to speak out against them. If this is happening in educational institutions, it suggests a concerning effort to train the younger generation to stay silent. Ricky seizes every chance to call this out, but don't just take my word for it. Look at Steve Carroll's reaction for yourself. It's difficult to believe Steve was joking with that subtle, non-verbal hint. In essence, Ricky stands firmly against how woke individuals constantly impose their ideas, beliefs and passions on others. To him, it comes across as pure arrogant. How and arrogant are you to think that you deserve to go through life with no one ever saying anything that you don't agree with or like? I, I want people to stop saying that joke's offensive. Yeah. I want them to start saying, I found it offensive. Because that's all it is. You're yeah. just telling me how you feel about it. Yeah. This speech highlights that Ricky's issue isn't with woke people occasionally taking offence. It's that they often turn their grievances into broader societal issues. Ricky isn't one to mince words addressing the woke community directly. You don't have to purify the jungle.
just grow up and have a laugh. He argues that if someone's feelings clash with facts, it's the feelings that need adjusting, not the facts. Let's laugh at your expense, shall we? Remember, they're just jokes. We're all going to die soon, and there's no sequel. So is Ricky Spot on in his stance, or is he being a bit too insensitive? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button. The next one promises to be even more controversial.